It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. In each of those moments, I was reminded of just how amazing these three individuals are and yet how vulnerable they are. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. I don't know if we've ever had so much feedback on a podcast as we got yesterday. The conversation about Barbie has... They all s- came from your staff. <laughs> sparked some, <laughs> some noise. Yes, my staff were very excited. What's, what's fascinating to me about this, Kylie, um, is the, the there are so many people who are angry about Barbie, but they haven't watched it or they're, I don't know, clinging to some political position. Um I'm, I'm pretty non-politically oriented. I just want people to be good to each other and know who they are. And to me, that movie said that. Didn't love everything about it. I was pretty clear about that. But it's a movie that gets you thinking, What? why sit there and watch something mindless when you can actually watch something that makes you think? And and I'm just, I'm so grateful that we got so many positive messages. There are a few people who weren't positive about it. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, a couple of people also said um, Oppenheimer. We'd like to know what you thought. <laughs> we need to talk about Oppenheimer. Wasn't it good to see that? Yeah, it was great. Okay. We're out of time. You know what? That ship has sailed. It's worth watch. It's 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 an incredible story. Christopher Nolan's brilliant. But uh, let's just let's just let Oppenheimer be because this is a parenting podcast. It's not a movie review podcast. And we reviewed Barbie and talked about that at length uh, on Fridays. Though you and I, Kylie, review the week. What happened this week? How did it go? How are we going as parents? What can we do to be better? We call it I'll do better tomorrow because we want to be the best parents that we can be every single day. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Uh, and, and so what we do is get a bit introspective and a bit intentional. I'm going to go first this week because my one's really quick and really easy. Uh, for about three months, you've been telling me to get rid of all those 10 cent bottles and cans, you know, the ones that you save for the recycling and you stick them out somewhere and just hope that eventually you'll be able to take them to the recycling depot and get 10 cents for each one. And, and just to be really clear, make some real money. We don't have a garage. We don't so have a garage. where do you put them? I put them around the corner behind the carport near the shed where nobody can see them. And you know how. Including you. You just, when your house is in an order. Even if you can't see it, you can just feel the energy of it. right. I just, every time I walk around there, there's just chaos. I'm starting a new collection. I took Emily on, uh, what was it, Saturday morning. Uh, We finally got it all together. We took all the cans and all the bottles down there. They broke as we lifted up the bags because they've been out there for so long. In the weather. That they've deteriorated. (laughs) There were bottles and cans everywhere. We get there. You're supposed to take the lids off. Didn't know that. So we're trying to take off all the lids and they're getting cranky at us because we're taking up the space and they need to bring other people through. We're like, oh, sorry, we're doing the best we can. Um, We ended up with uh, about 50 bucks worth of bottles and cans. We had five. <laughs> just over 500 bottles and cans out there. Here's the problem. They tried to give me the money and it didn't transfer. We spent half an hour playing around with the app and all that sort of stuff. And they're like, oh, no, no, it'll go into the bank. It'll be fine. It'll go in. Uh, never went in. Never went in. So I haven't told Emily and I just gave her the money because she's been saving up all these bottles and cans for so long. But I'm 50 bucks down as a result of um, the, the collection thing just not working. Can't believe it. So we've started saving again, Kylie. We've started getting a whole lot more of those bottles and cans and I think we're up to about 30. When there's another 500, we'll try again and hopefully this time we'll actually get paid. But that was my audio better tomorrow. Oh, and on the way back, I bought her and her sister who joined us uh, a, a hot chocolate and we had a nice, just just good quality. She was so excited. She's like, Dad, if you're buying me a hot chocolate at the cafe, does that mean that this is a daddy-daughter date? Like she was so excited and it felt so good. And I, I thought, yeah, th- well, these- she milked it that day because mm. her big sister asked her if she'd t- go to the beach with her while they walked the dogs. Yeah. And she said, is this going to be a sister-sister date? Right, right. She's after another treat. <laughs> and she said, yeah, I guess so. And she said, will you buy me an ice cream? <laughs> that's so funny. This nine-year-old knows how to work the system. <laughs> uh, so that's my order better tomorrow. Just the, the small things, hanging out in the car for a few minutes, playing around at the stinky bottle recycling place, um, and then going for a hot chocolate. Really simple things, but it makes such a difference. Memories, fun, togetherness, connection, time. Uh, ha- had many of those moments over the last little while and uh, just wanted to share that one as an example of it. That is my I'll Do Better Tomorrow. Well, I'm glad you get to have sunshines, unicorns and rainbows. Uh, well, tell me about your I'll Do Better Tomorrow. Well, I actually had a really beautiful experience with one of our daughters. I had to take her to an appointment and in the process of that appointment, I just I was able to kind of see with new eyes the challenges that she was going through. Um, and it was it was a really, really beautiful moment. Coming home, 
as the evening wore on, there was just, I, I could just see there was some emotion there and, and a need for kind of connection. And so I was able to kind of wrap her up in my arms in my bed and we sat there and we had, you know, a beautiful connective chat together. And um, before she left, we said a little prayer and I gave her some oils specifically for her and um, sent her off to bed. And it was just really calm. Well, the next thing, you know, I've got the next daughter who's having a bit of a meltdown. And so we had to go through the same process with her. By now it's like, I don't know, quarter past nine. I'm, I'm really ready for bed. You have been traveling all week and I'm doing this all alone. I've got Miss Nine who's walking around the house because she is consistently <laughs> procrastinating bedtime and she shares a whole heap of um, challenges that she's going through at the moment and not sure how to kind of work through them. And so we deal with that little meltdown and again we say a little prayer and we have some oils <laughs> and then the next daughter comes through the door and we start all over again. And so much of it is is exhausting. So much of it is draining, like mentally, physically, and spiritually even, like just a drain on my being. And yet in each of those moments, I was reminded of just how amazing these three individuals are and how strong and capable they are and yet how vulnerable they are. And you can be all of those things in the same breath. And so my ordeal bed tomorrow is just when we take the time to slow down and actually really connect with our kids, we see them for who they really are instead of seeing them for the challenges that they bring into our lives. We actually get to see their brilliance. And and I was so grateful for that because when life is busy, it, 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 you can really just get caught up in the challenge of everything. But to be able to have those moments with them was really special. It's the highs and lows, isn't it? It's the roller coaster of parenting. <laughs> it's literally in the same moment. It's not like you go from moment to moment. One is high and one is low. It's This moment is both so low because my child is struggling so much and so high because my child has come to me to say, I need to talk. And I think that's what I relished. I, I just was this acknowledgement that there was so much big emotion going on for all of them and yet they knew where to come. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that in spite of that challenge that they see me as a place that's safe, that well, they're able to come and, and just find the love and connection and acceptance that they need in that moment. A little bit of a shorter, I'll do better tomorrow than normal, a shorter podcast than normal, but really uh, one take-home message and one alone, I think, and that is be there for the kids. T-I-M-E is how they spell L-O-V-E. The Happy Families Podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. Hey, thanks so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Oh, and if you are a Happy Families member, can I just say a huge thank you to you? We are so grateful for the way Happy Families members are really contributing to all of the content that we produce for free to help families be happier. If you would like to be one of our Happy Families members and get access not just to the free stuff, but also our premium content, we would love for you to join us and be a part of the Happy Families family. You can find out more by clicking on happyfamilies.com.au and then having a look at the membership. Please take a look. I think you'll find that it's incredible value and it does so much to support the work that we do to help get the message out that families can be happy. Happy.